major highway closures in Philadelphia and other states as his lordship, the Pope, comes to town. By the way, when he's in Latin America, they don't close big roads for him. But here in America, he's going to be called His Excellency and all the rest of this. And I'm not a Catholic basher. Everybody knows that. I have a lot of Catholic friends. I judge a tree by its fruits. A lot of great people I know are Catholics. Most Catholics I know literally think this guy's the Antichrist. In fact, it's the Catholics that are, like, congratulating me and thanking me in letters and emails saying, thank you. You know, we understand you just don't think all Catholics are devils. You're not judging people. You understand there's been a lot of good in the church. A lot of people that you know, fought for rights and fought against slavery and you know, fought against abortion. But, man, the Catholic Church today, I mean, even their top people are getting removed or demoted because, they, because they're speaking out against Pope Francis, who is just so bad. I <laughs> mean, might as well have Fidel Castro as president. And that's why they brought him to Cuba, this new pope. There's never been a pope come to Cuba since it fell to communism. He could probably teach Fidel more about communism than Fidel knows. I don't want to be on a rant. I want to go to Larry and Truth Raider and Emok and Mark and everybody that's coming up. Larry Pratt's popping in for like 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to go back to your calls and get to more news. But uh, that's what the lockdowns are. And I'm worried about the leadership. I'm not saying the police want to get you or the military. It's the police and military that realize what this really is. This is conditioning everyone to military-level groups of police and military regalia, shutting everything down. And it'll, it's only effective in controlling large groups for shutting down cities. It has nothing to do with capturing bad guys. Capturing bad guys is getting leads, getting what people look like. Talking to the public, the real eyes and ears. If you think locking down half of Boston is going to catch the supposed bomber, it didn't catch him. Putting out the description did. He was in the boat outside the cordon. And it turned out he himself was set up. I know it's all patriotic to go, oh, kill him, you know, death penalty. He deserves it, that little guy. They cut his throat out when they got him out of that boat. They shot that boat up like 500-plus rounds trying to kill him because the orders were, we don't want him to testify. Then he told everybody, I'm innocent. So they had his lawyer come out and say, he's really guilty. Why would lawyers like that? Who needs a prosecutor? He got a defense lawyer like that. His brother worked for the CIA as a serious operative, and the Russians blew his cover. Two years for the Boston bombing in their newspaper. They went to the FBI and they said, why does he have a fake name and why do you let him fly under it? And the CIA and FBI lied and said, we'd never watched them. We were never aware of them. When it turned out, they knew exactly who they were and they were protected. Now, were they triple agents? Did they actually carry out the bombing? Had they been flipped to Islamic State? Before it was even called that, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe they are the real bombers. I know this, you're lying about what really happened, government. Shame on you. Let's go ahead and go back. He just hung up from New York. I, I guess I answered his question about the coordinating him. I just wanted to elaborate on that because it's a big deal. It's a blockade. This is blockade training. This is coordinating. This is shut down of city training. I don't have time to go to calls yet. I'll, I'll go to calls after Larry Pratt leaves us. Got some updates on new attacks on the Second Amendment. Plus, this great new video that Jakari Jackson did a radio report on. Miss Carolina, South Carolina, blast holes through anti-gun question. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to Wall Street. Latest panic. Trump could win. As if Trump would hurt Wall Street. Free market cutting taxes would make Wall Street surge. But the globalists don't want... Basically a type of QE, that's what cutting taxes does, it's a healthy form of QE, delivered to the people. They don't want a tax break to you to build your own architecture of, of, of systems. They have power by turning little people's money off and then turning the insider's money up. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're here live. And now he's growing up. That's Merle Haggard bringing us in. Sounds Van Zandt song, one of the best. A little, little jewel from Texas. Let him go so long. We got Larry Pratt joining us. Uh, the 
head of Gunners of America, the only no compromise gun group, the gun group who Ted Nugent, NRA board member, agrees with me, got the NRA back on track. That's one of the greatest accomplishments I think ever of Gun Owners of America is they bulldogged them nicely. Uh, and I pressured Pratt and others, uh, it was very gentlemanly, more than a decade ago to go after the NRA. And he thought about it for a few years, talked to their board, and he actually did it. So I'm not taking credit. I'm just saying when I get mad at Rand Paul and say he should be more aggressive and sound more like Trump, it's because I love Rand Paul. I know he's for real. I support him. I want him to win. I trust him. But I know he's listening to more milk toast political advisors that say that Trump's going to get destroyed in a general election because uh, he's too extreme. He's not extreme. I don't know if I trust Trump or not. I don't know him. But I do know what he's saying is true, and that's why he's so popular. I want to first get Larry's uh, take on something exciting. We have a video on Infowars.com. Don Salazar wrote about it. Miss South Carolina blast holes through anti-gun question. If we teach people the right way to use guns, then we will reduce the risk. And it's not a super hardcore Second Amendment statement like you know, guns don't kill people, people do. Well, statistics show more armed states have less crime. Uh, you know, a statement I would have made, but still compared to the, usually the anti-gun rhetoric that they program into these ladies, they tell them that's the right way to answer. It's beautiful. And compared to, you know, that Miss South Carolina that time um, who was talking about how do we help South Africa or whatever, and she didn't even wasn't even able to speak. It's very, very refreshing. So here's that clip. America loves our Second Amendment, but gun violence continues to be a tragic problem. Do you support a ban on military-style assault weapons? I don't, but I think it's because we need to increase education. We have to go back there. If we teach people the proper way to use guns, then we will reduce the, the risk of having gun-related um, <laughs> gun accidents. It starts Yay. with education. And they love it, of course. Thank you so much. Okay. You know, the lady that asked the anti-gun question, I'm not going to call her names because she was given a pre-written question. That's on record. But it shows how forever all these pageants have this anti-liberty bent to them. In every case. So they asked a question like, well, I know the Second Amendment, you know, Americans love it. But what about all these deaths like it's causing it when the deaths are flat? Overall, gun violence is way down. I mean, that would have been a real question. Where do you stand on the Second Amendment would have been a fair question. Then she could say what she really thought. Do you know what it is? Are you for it? Are you against it? Do you have mixed views? That's a fair question. Where do you stand on the right to keep and bear arms, the Second Amendment? Not some slanted question. I will say, though, that lady asking the question looks like the idiot from South Carolina that time who didn't know which end was up. Can we find that clip over for later for Larry Pratt leaves us? Well, again, the number one battler for the right to keep and bear arms in the country, a very humble man as well, joins us via video Skype until the hour ends. Then we're going back to your calls and news, folks. That's Larry Pratt of Gun Owners of America. We'll put their website up on screen for TV viewers, but gunowners.org. Uh, Larry, what's your take on that clip we just played? Alex, good to be with you. The uh, I think you're right in your assessment. The gal did rather well considering everything, the environment that she's in. What She probably knew what was expected of her. And when she gave an answer the, that she did, I, I was very encouraged that, uh, my goodness, uh, not only is she a very attractive woman, but uh, she's got a brain in her head. And that seems to kind of be rare at these pageants. <laughs> that, that's not the premium quality they seem to be looking for, no. <laughs> Especially not if she comes in speaking like Annie Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Larry Pratt joins us, GunOwners.org, Gunners of America. Larry, I, I want to just hear from you what's front and center on your radar, what you think the biggest bad things happening for the right to self-defense are, what the... Uh, you know, good things and bad things that are happening. And I also want to talk about this move to use VA systems against Social Security recipients and where that's going. Well, Alex, this is the same kind of thing at the VA 
that we first saw, and, and you and I talked about it years ago under George Bush, when the what we had dubbed the Veterans Disarmament Act, the so-called Nixon Enhancement Act, and we said they're going to use medical diagnoses that have nothing to do with the person being violent to himself or others, which is the are the trigger words in the language of the bill, and certainly there won't be any due process of a court proceeding uh, where your lawyer squares off against the prosecutor and your witnesses against theirs. None of that. It's just some shrink or some other medical worker says, well, it looks like he's got PTSD. Uh, let's uh, put that down. And a lot of times that serves as the trigger to keep people from getting guns, even though the overwhelming number of people who have PTSD are not violent to other people at all. I knew a guy in the military, uh, he'd been in combat, and when he was back home, at least when he was back home, I don't know if it started before, but he told me, he said uh, sometimes he'd wake up in the middle of the night in a panic, grab his pistol that he had by his bed, uh, get into the corner of the room, hunker down and clear the room, as it were, you know, with his pistol moving it back and forth. When he saw that there wasn't anybody there, uh, after all, then he put the pistol back on the table and went back to bed never hurt anybody and that's probably about as scary as it gets with most ptsd and yet they're using that as the reason to say you can't have a gun you can't have a concealed carry permit you're finished with the second amendment bud well most of the family i've known and people that were in heavy combat when they first come back and maybe just two weeks out of battles they are a car backfire or whatever they jump under the table uh and Sure, they may kind of carry their gun around with them for a while just because they came out of that area. But in a few months, they usually totally get calm and are okay after that. But the point is, you can't take their guns away just because they've been through this process. No. And, of course, as a sidebar, if they live on the Mexican border in places in Arizona, uh, they're going to carry their gun with them everywhere they go, including the bathroom, because they never know when their house is going to be assaulted. Uh, and this is a change from, as I've been told, I interviewed uh, one of the ranchers that owns property down there uh, some time ago on my one-hour show, by the way, on Genesis as well. Uh, I'm uh, not to be compared with Alex Jones, but at least I'm on the same Brother, network. listen, we need to <laughs> multiply our numbers. I love what you're doing. Plug that show at GCNlive.com. There's links to it at GunOwners.org. Listen to yeah. Gun Owners of America. Tune into their yep. show and spread the word and get it on this same station. Ask all of our affiliates to pick it up. You bet. That'd be great if they would. Uh, we're on Saturdays twice. Uh, it's made available on Saturday. And uh, anyway, this gal was very clear that uh, it's a war zone where she is. The, gov the government has given up. They know there's a tunnel under her property with air conditioning being used for people smuggling and all other kinds of smuggling. And they're not doing anything about it. Incredible. Again, the head of Gunners of America, Larry Pratt's with us. Uh, I saw they came out a month and a half ago and said, we want to start targeting Social Security recipients. They, if they even take a money transfer, that means that they are psychologically inept. That means we can basically declare them without a court trial or anything, uh, basically handicapped where they can't have a gun. And the FBI even warned that this was overly broad. Obviously, that's putting it lightly. And then I heard Congress wrote Obama a letter saying, don't direct them to do this. I know you're up on the Hill all the time. What's the latest on the move to disarm Social Security recipients? Alex, I think that's going to stumble. Uh, the president's tried other administrative approaches to putting a lasso around the Second Amendment's neck. And so far, pushback has been pretty extreme. He, he can get away with certain things because they don't have the visibility that the Second Amendment has, but, uh, you know, there are other hot-button issues like abortion, but people that are opposed to abortion typically are not having an abortion. But people who defend the Second Amendment are defending their property. And when the Democrats primarily, but sometimes the Republicans, start talking about additional restrictions and whatnot or guns that they want to take away, they're talking about what people actually own. And I think in addition to the understanding that many gun owners have of the constitutional role of gun ownership, it's that personal element of that's my property. 
Looking at the positive fronts, and then I want to get back into some of the attacks they're launching, what's some of the positive Second Amendment news you've got, Larry? Well, we're seeing in a number of states, counties, even whole states like Kansas, telling the feds, if you do something beyond what the Second Amendment permits you in this county, in this state, 